This is my productivity workflow with using LLMs. Recently, there has been some pretty incredible LLM powered apps that have really sped up my productivity workflow. I've basically been able to increase the speed at which I learn things and get things done through a few different apps and extensions on my computer and phone. So in this video, I wanna share with you how I use LLMs for productivity and my personal hobbies. So first I'll talk about LLM power dictation, the fastest search I found, how I use LLMs to synthesize YouTube videos and super long podcasts and lectures, how I use it for learning Japanese, and also how I've set up automated tasks like giving me a weekly summary of events in my area. Also, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, so if there are any alternatives, definitely let me know in the comments below. At the end of the video, I'll also share with you something I've been experimenting with lately called vibe coding, which is basically making apps without touching any code at all. All right, so first, LLM power dictation. If you think about your typing speed, most people range between 100 words per minute to maybe 150 words per minute if you're super fast. But if you are dictating, you can actually speak at 200 plus words per minute with no issues. But let me just show you how this works. So let me open up Obsidian and I'll hit a keyboard shortcut, which I've mapped to Command Option T. Okay, so this is a test to see if it can transcribe anything that I'm saying. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to say right now, but make sure to like and subscribe to the video. Okay, thanks. Boom, it's done. Th that's pretty amazing. So if you've ever tried out using dictation on your phone or on your computer, you've probably not been super impressed with its accuracy. And the reason why AI power dictation is so powerful is because it's based on what OpenAI released called the Whisper model. So it's trained on a million hours of data. And so it's super accurate and fast. So now for me, whenever I have to respond to anything that's long, like for example, writing an email, or respond to a message or even just interacting with an LLM, I use my voice. So there are three main apps I use for speaking to my computer. The first is for pure transcription. The second allows me to send it to ChatGPT for a cleaned up response. And the third is what I use for search, which is the fastest app that I found for searching anything up. Let me walk you through the first app first. So the one that I use for transcription is called Whisperflow. You just set up a keyboard shortcut. You hold it down and then you talk to the computer and then it's gonna transcribe everything perfectly. So one thing that's cool about Whisperflow is that it recognizes what app you're in and then it formats the text accordingly. Okay, so right now I have Gmail open and let's say I'm responding to some email. So I'll say, Dear Eric, it's great to hear from you. Thank you for responding to my email. I've made sure to like and subscribe to the video and that is all. Best, Resu. Boom, and then it formats the email perfectly. So yeah, this is super convenient and it's saved me a lot of time. It's also really useful if you're searching something up with ChatGPT and you wanna explain something in depth, you can hold down and you can go way more in depth and ask a way longer question without having to type everything up. The second app that I use allows you to send your voice through a prompt, which is useful for summarizing what you're saying or cleaning up any mistakes that you have in your speech. Okay, so here I have Obsidian again, and now I use a keyboard shortcut. Okay, so I'm just, taking notes on how to cook some pasta. Boom. So I basically was stumbling through explaining something and this dictation software allows you to write a custom prompt to process your audio in any way that you want. So I have it take my audio and then format it into something that's easily readable. And this is really useful for taking notes in Obsidian like meeting notes or writing down SOPs for how to do something because you can just explain something and you can kind of stumble through it and it'll still output something that's extremely readable and nicely formatted. What's really nice about Super Whisper is that you can also run a local model on your computer, which works offline and it doesn't send anything to the servers. But for searching stuff with voice, I use an app called Perplexity, which is the fastest and most efficient search that I found. If I want to search anything up, I just hit a keyboard shortcut, control option P. What movies are in the theaters right now? And boom, it shows me all the movies in the theaters right now. Who are the most subscribed to YouTube channels right now? For some reason, Perplexity's voice model is probably the most accurate and the fastest one I've found, even compared to the other apps. But you can only use it within their app, so you can't use Perplexity's voice model in Obsidian, for example. But if you're searching anything up, this is such a convenient workflow because you can just hit a keyboard shortcut and then you can ask anything that you want. Besides the search speed and dictation model, Perplexity is probably my favorite LLM to use on a daily basis, and it's probably the one that I use the most. Unlike other LLMs, you can have a search through social, which are YouTube and Reddit, academic papers, and also the general web. Even though ChatGPT has the ability to search the web, I've compared both the results from ChatGPT and from Perplexity, and consistently I've gotten better results from using Perplexity than with ChatGPT. So 
you could try it out and see. So next I wanna share how I use LLMs to summarize YouTube videos. The first is with this really easy to use extension called YouTube Summary AI. So let me show you how this works. So if I go to this video right here, this is an iPhone review and it's like 15 minutes, but I kind of want to just get the gist of it. So I click this button right here, summarize, which is this extension and it summarizes this with Gemini. So I can go through this and I can get a really quick overview of whether or not this is a good phone and what are the main features without having to watch 15 minutes. So this extension works really, really well for videos that are like 15 minutes long or 20 minutes long. And you can even use it for this video that you're watching right now. YouTube also has their built-in summary for some videos. So if you look right here, there's this YouTube summary, but it's not very descriptive and you can't really get a clear overview of everything that he said in the video. Whereas this one is really clear and you can even select an option to make it shorter or more detailed based on your preference. But for super long videos like podcasts or lectures, I actually like to use a different website called Notebook LM, which is also based off of Gemini. It's basically this AI research assistant where you can put in a bunch of different resources, a bunch of different videos, and it synthesizes all the information and you can just ask it questions and create a very in-depth summary. Besides YouTube videos, you can also put in PDFs or eBooks and have it synthesize all the information and be able to ask questions or generate a 20 minute podcast, which is pretty useful. But just with the YouTube extension and Notebook LM, it's saved me a ton of time and be able to really understand topics at an even deeper level than just watching a video on a surface level. But yeah, that's how I get quick summaries of YouTube videos and learn from podcast lectures and super long YouTube videos. The next thing I wanna talk about is how I use LLMs to learn Japanese more efficiently. With this custom GPT sensei, I've configured it so that if I just type a Japanese word with no context, it'll explain to me what it means. I can also just attach an image with no context and it'll transcribe it and explain to me what it means. Basically in ChatGPT, you can create a custom GPT that only does one thing with a custom prompt. So I've created one here called Sensei and I've given it instructions where it's the top Japanese teacher and it will only explain things to me in context without giving me a direct translation. So this goes way further than just using the default ChatGPT. So normally you would have to paste in the word and also ask it to explain it to you in a specific way. Whereas now I can just paste in the word, not explain anything, and it knows everything about me. I have this set up so that it responds half in Japanese and half in English. And it also explains things in context I understand. So it also knows that I speak Chinese, so it might give me a word that is similar. For me, I mostly use a custom GPT for language learning, but you can really use this for anything like programming, doing your taxes, or making YouTube videos. Next, I wanna share with you a pretty underrated feature on ChatGPT that not a lot of people know about, and they are automated tasks. So on ChatGPT, there's a beta feature called GPT-40 with scheduled tasks. And what you can do with this is basically have it send you a daily or weekly email with any information that you wanted to look up for you. When I was staying out in Japan for over a month, I use this also to send me any events or cool things to check out in the local area. So for example, what we can do is you can say, give me a weekly summary of any events or concerts that are happening in Los Angeles. So after I do this, it's gonna send me an email every week of any events or concerts that are happening in my area. But you can probably imagine some other use cases for this because this is basically creating a custom newsletter for yourself. For example, you can have it recommend a different documentary or a different book every single week, or even just have it give you a weekly reminder of your goals for the year. I think this works particularly well for things that are constantly changing and being updated. For example, if you're trying to look for a new place to live or trying to buy a house, you can have it send you different prospects every single week as they pop up. So yeah, when you get the email, it pretty much looks like this and you can just click this click view message and it'll show you the results in the ChatGPT app. Pretty convenient. So yeah, that's it for the scheduled tasks. Lastly, I wanna share with you how to use LLMs to make apps even if you don't know how to code. If you do know how to code, then you probably already use something like Cursor or ChatGPT to help you code faster. But I wanna share with you something called Vibe Coding, which is coined by Andre Karpathy, one of the co-founders of ChatGPT. LLMs have basically gone to the point now where you can make a full-fledged app without any knowledge of coding and without even typing. You can just use your voice to have it build anything that you want. One thing I made with this a couple weeks back is I wanted to make a tool to analyze different YouTube channels and to see their upload schedules and whether or not there's a correlation with views. So I made the whole thing without writing a single line of code and it works pretty seamlessly. Okay, let's 
obviously. You can see here are all the videos that I made and you can see my upload distribution is pretty scattered, but I mostly upload in the morning. Yeah, I built this thing in a few hours. I didn't write a single line of code. I didn't even look at the code and it works exactly how I wanted to. So the website that I used to do that is called v0.dev. So let me give you an example. So let's say, can you make Tetris in terminal style art? So it's coding. I don't really need to know anything that it does, but after I finish this, it's going to be playable. If there are any bugs, all you have to do is explain what the bug is and tell it to fix it. And it'll also fix it itself. You don't need to know any code. You don't even need to look at the code. You can just use the app. And then when you want a new feature or when something breaks, you explain it and it'll update the code accordingly. Okay. So it just finished making it. Let me try it out. Terminal Tetris. Looks like it works totally fine. Yeah. And it clearly lines. Yeah. This is Versal v0.dev super powerful for making any apps. So yeah, if there's any tool that you want that you think would be nice, you can easily make it and prototype it with v0.dev and you don't need to know any coding knowledge at all. But yeah, that's pretty much my product review workflow with LMs right now. And this is really an update to the video that I made about my Mac product review workflow about six months ago. So if you haven't seen that yet, definitely make sure to check that out and I'll see you over there. Let's get it.